This week, American Ballet Theater opened its 2012 spring season at the Metropolitan Opera House. Few ballet companies equal ABT for its combination of size, scope, and history. Recognized as a living national treasure since its founding in 1940, this company has been the home of some of the greatest dancers from all over the world. It is a melting pot of the very best, a community of dancers whose aim it is to take the greatest ballets from the past and create the finest dance of the future. Originally, ABT was, you know, its identity was given to it by the likes of Anthony Tudor and Agnes de Mille and uh, Fokine and, and, and a host of choreographers that probably never made it to household name status. Um, but it was, it was all about new works and they were works that reflected the times in which we lived in the 40s. And, and you know, for the first time, ballets were about people and human beings instead of nymphs and sylphs and swans. Dance is a primal form of communication. We, as a species, moved and used body language to communicate before we had an ability to speak words. Um, so it, you know, yes, ballet is a very refined form of body language, but that's exactly what it is. Um, and when it is simply decorative, it's just simply pretty. It's simply lovely, uh, but hard to be moving. When it's infused with the meaning behind the steps. It's a whole other story. Court the line between tragedy and disappointment <laughs> for the for when it doesn't work out. Somehow I think it has to be more, it's just such a disappointment. I, all my dreams and my, as opposed to a tragedy. It's a, a, it's a little early. I remember when I was like 15, watching performances of Sally Wilson in Agnes de Mille's Fall River Legend, and watching Eric Brune and Carla Fracci do Giselle, and it resonating with me, going, my God, they're actors without words. The dramatic nature of classical ballet is an essential part of the dancer's performance. Without an emotional foundation, the dancer's movements would become just a series of pretty steps. When you go to the ballet, depending on who you see dancing, you're going to see a totally different performance. Because what the person is bringing to the stage is not just how they were taught to dance and how they rehearsal, they're bringing themselves. And as Baryshnikov once said, you bring to the stage with you every decision you've ever made in your life. And that is what is so wonderful and revealing and beautiful and specific to ballet dancers, is that our instruments are ourselves, not just our bodies, but our intellect, our soul, our opinions, everything. So when you have somebody that has that compulsive need, whether it's to be perfect, whether it's to dance, you see that and it's fascinating. It draws you in, it's interesting, it makes you wonder. When you see a totally different dancer who was driven by completely different motivations, it brings a different feeling to your soul. It inspires you in a different way. And that's what dance is, you know? Choreographer Anthony Tudor was associated with ABT from its inception, and in 1974, he became its associate artistic director. Tudor is seen as one of the principal transformers of ballet into a modern art. He would work with you in a way that made you have to face what it was you had to face in order to do what the character needed as a response. When he, when he touches you, it's a thrill that makes you turn to him. So it's not so much that he's pulling you back, yes. but that, in, that it's a thrill that goes right through and this, you, you find each other very closely, you can't take that. So that's where this He had a famous saying that took me years from. to figure out. He would say, no, 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 now you're recreating a result. Go back to the source. And I kept thinking, well, you're the source. Um, and it took me forever to figure out that, no, that's not what he meant. He meant go back to the source of what made you produce an honest, reaction in the first place. And then don't try and recreate the reaction, recreate you know, the, the environment that got you there. He really needed to see the response to music in relation to the response of the character. 
it wasn't just dancing for dancing's sake. Every movement had a meaning. Every movement had a reason for being. I was so inspired when I first joined ABT, seeing, seeing the American, Ethan Stiefel, the Cuban, Jose Manuel Carreño, the Spaniard, Angel Carrella, the Russian, Vladimir Malikov. I was so influenced by what I now think of as dancers from completely different back backgrounds and styles of dancing. Holmberg joined ABT at 17, and even early in his career, his potential as a great dancer was noticeable. After a certain point, it became really evident that he had all the makings of a major, major artist. When I first joined ABT, it was my dream come true. I, I wanted to dance with ABT, and consequently, I wanted to become a principal dancer in a week's time. I told him, listen, David, I, I am going to be your worst enemy for the next couple, three years. I am going to purposefully hold you back. Everyone is going to want to throw you out on that stage as fast and as furiously as they can because you've got a lot of really fabulous attributes. I look back at, at when I was 19 or 20 and I was so eager to be given these colossal full-length ballets and and I wasn't ready. I had to be groomed. I had to be taught how to partner, how to characterize. And Kevin did a really, really good job of doing that. Now at 29, David Hallberg is not only widely regarded as one of the top male dancers in the world, but also the first non-Russian to be admitted into the Bolshoi Ballet as a principal dancer. I felt proud proud of him and for him. He's one of the first dancers I can say I've known since he was a kid into an adult and, and an artist in his own right to hit the world stage and hit it in a way that is remarkable. The amount of attention it got in the media does reflect how big a deal it is. When an array of defected, that was unprecedented. If the artist is a huge game-changing artist, it's going to get a lot of attention. ABT was recognized as America's National Ballet Company by Congress. However, in the early 90s, the company was $5 million in debt without an artistic director, and its very survival was unsure. I thought, you know, ABT gave me my artistic life. Since I was a kid, I was looking at, at the depth and the richness of the art form through the prism of ABT. And as a professional, it, it honed me and everything. So I thought, I owe it something to try. But I didn't know where to start. So we agreed to agree that if we could find the right executive and that executive would be a partner to me, I would not answer to the executive and the executive would not answer to me. We would both equally have to duke out those spectacularly bad business decisions that good artistic ideas can present, um, uh, that we would move forward. And I think, and so, you know, obviously I took the job. The company felt that one of their own was being selected to be artistic director when they chose Kevin McKenzie and we were all so proud and excited. And he was a, a dancer, an American dancer, and also just such a nice guy. <laughs> we dug ourselves out of the hole because the company, the entire company, from the receptionist at the front door, to me, understood the severity of the problem. That just because we were ABT didn't mean we deserved to survive. You know, we, we all had to dig in there and do what it was that we had to do. Modest about his successful 20-year track record, Mackenzie is duly proud of signing choreographer Alexei Ranmansky as artist-in-residence. If I were to be asked what is my single best accomplishment after 20 years, it's hiring Alexei Ranmansky. Let us go back. Because he embodies that so role that Anthony first, Tudor served four, 40 with... years into this company, which is a, a theatrical mind that knows all the rules and knowingly breaks them. He's able to capture the power that this art form can convey to what it means for humans to excel. When he comes into the studio, it's very clear he has in his mind what he wants to see. 
and he is feverishly imparting that to you to try to get you to understand what it is that he wants and keep pushing you and pushing you and pushing you until you, you get it. With a cast of international stars, American Ballet Theater has just begun its 72nd season that will run through July 7th. We're going to be doing Swan Lake and Giselle and La Baie Adair and Romeo and Juliet and, and, and they're wonderful spectacles for the Met. Uh, I'm, but I'm really proud to say that we're going to be having a new production of Onyegin, um, which is John Krenko's masterpiece. Uh, of course, our new Firebird. I think it's going to be a, hard for me to imagine that it's the 20th time I'm sitting through a Met season that I put together, but I'm looking forward to it. <laughs>